Welcome back to Storytime. I hope you've been enjoying this series as much as I've enjoyed putting it together. This is an eclectic collection of stories which have touched me or taught me or amused me through the years. I'm sure that you have stories of your own that you return to with joy from time to time. Thanks to Charles Kuralt's book, On the Road, the book based on his segments presented nightly in years past on CBS newscasts, I learned the story of Polly Murray. She was born in 1910. She died in 1985. Her life was filled with struggle and triumph. Her contributions remain. Anna Pauline Murray was the first African-American woman to earn a doctorate from Yale Law School after Harvard turned her away because of her gender. She was a civil rights activist long before Martin Luther King gave his I Have a Dream speech. But let me share with you what Charles Kuralt said about her as he stood one day in front of a church in North Carolina, the bells ringing. At the old antebellum Chapel of the Cross in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the bell is ringing out. Let it ring. This is a story about reconciliation and triumph. The triumph belongs to Polly Murray, who had spent her whole life, in a sense, struggling toward the sound of that bell. And the triumph belongs to this church, which has been standing here since 1848, long enough to have seen a lot of history. This is a story of triumph but it begins with pain and disgrace. It begins, to speak plainly, with a rape. The rape was committed in the days before the Civil War by a wealthy, young North Carolina lawyer named Sidney Smith. His victim was a young slave woman. There's nothing unusual about that in the sorry annals of slavery, but in this case, the baby who was born a beautiful octoroon child named Cornelia was recognized by the White family. Sidney Smith's sister, Mary Ruffin Smith, listened to her conscience, and her conscience told her that this child, born a slave, was also, after all, her niece. When the time came, Mary Ruffin Smith, the white slave owner, brought Cornelia the slave child niece, to this church to be baptized. The parish record says, Baptized, 1854, December 20th, five servant children belonging to Miss Mary Ruffin Smith. And among their names is listed Cornelia, age 10. On Sundays, Cornelia used to sit up there in the balcony during the services, standing to sing with the rest of the congregation, O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. She was 21 when the Union Army came through here and set her free. She married a black Union veteran from Pennsylvania who built a house for them to live in. It was the house Pauli Murray grew up in. She is Cornelia's granddaughter part black, part white, part American Indian, probably. Her grandmother taught her as she grew up to be proud of all those things, and she never forgot. She left the house to become a fighter for civil rights as long ago as 1938, to become a lawyer and a professor of law, a poet, and an author. And then, at the age of 62, to become something else. She entered the Episcopal Seminary to study for holy orders. She was ordained the first black woman priest in the Episcopal Church. Did I say black? She would say black and white, African and Irish. At the old chapel of the cross, at the very altar where her grandmother was baptized as a slave, for the first time, the Holy Eucharist was celebrated by the Reverend Dr. Pauli Murray. The Bible Polly Murray was reading from belonged to her grandmother Cornelia. The lectern the Bible was resting on was given in memory of the woman who owned Cornelia, Mary Ruffin Smith. That day, the rector gave the charge to Polly Murray. He said, Those 
purple ribbons marking the place in your Bible, recall another chapter in our common history. They came to you in 1944 with a box of flowers to mark your graduation from Howard University, a gift from another Episcopalian, Eleanor Roosevelt. You are a woman. You are a Negro. That proud description for which you fought so valiantly and which you will not let passing fashion take from you. The parish register of the Chapel of the Cross records your grandmother's baptism in an entry dated December 20th, 1854. Five servant children belonging to Miss Mary Ruffin Smith. Can those words now apply to each of us as we minister to the world and support one another? Is there a better description of the pilgrim people of Christ than servant children who belong to one another? After the communion service, Charles Corral to ask Pauli Murray, do you think your grandmother would have been pleased to have been here at that service, maybe sitting in her old seat in the balcony and looking down on you celebrating communion? Pauli Murray's response was, my grandmother was much closer than that. She was right behind me. Geralt ends the episode with these words. In Christ, there is no east or west, the old hymn goes. In him, no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. That is what Polly Murray has been trying to say as a civil rights struggler, a lawyer, a poet, and here in this little chapel, where her slave grandmother and her slave owner great-great-aunt worshipped as a priest. She's been trying to say that, that there's no east or west, no north or south. That and one other thing, there's no black or white either. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Galatian church, reminds us that at the foot of the cross, there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female. My wonderful friend Chuck Mack translated that scripture for me by saying, At the foot of the cross, there's no big I and little you. We are all God's children. Pray with me. Father, we are so grateful that the ground is level at the foot of the cross, that each one of us as individuals must stand there to proclaim our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in so doing, we are accepted into your family. Your family, Lord, is varied. May we be reminded that the color of our skin doesn't matter. But as Martin Luther King said so many years after Pauli Murray, the content of our character is what matters. And Father, we only can develop a true character when we have come to Jesus for forgiveness of our sins, accept him as Lord and Savior, and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you have done. And thank you for making me a part of your great family. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.